evening, friends. This is your host to welcome you through the creaking door into the inner sanctum. Come in, come in. We've been having labor trouble. Our pet vampire, Oscar, a member of local Ooh Ooh, has been complaining about unfair haunting conditions. He wants longer nights and fatter victims. And then there's also a jurisdictional dispute going on between Oscar and Harry, the demon hangman. Oscar says that Harry should keep his news out of other people's business. Oh, by the way, let me tell you about our latest guest. Used to be an income tax consultant. One day, he deducted his wife's head from her body with a hatchet. Sort of a decapita games act. <laughs> Tonight's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Flame of Death, was written by Ed Adamson and Bob Sloan, and stars Charlotte Holland in the role of Norma, with Les Tremaine as George. Well, now, you folks ready for tonight's gory gambit? Hmm. Oh, you want to leave? Well, go ahead. Over my dead body. <laughs> like angry ghosts, the thoughts of fear and death stalk uneasily through the dark and torturous labyrinth of the human mind. They are ghosts that cannot be denied. Ghosts that distort everyday living into an unreasoning, shuddering existence. He comes into my room and screams, he won't let me alone. You say it can't be, George, but I know he isn't really dead. These are the things a woman says to her doctor. The woman is Mrs. Norma Loring, and the doctor is a close friend, George Haynes. Inside Norma Loring's mind, there's a cold, frightening despair. A doctor can help sometimes. A doctor can probe into the human mind. But how deep? How deep? You must rest. Sleep is very important. Sleep? Oh, I, I, I tried, George. I tried, but I can't. I can't do anything but think of David. And the way he died in that fire. Now you've got to put those thoughts out of your mind. It's been six months since your husband died. It wasn't six months ago. Norma. It was last night. Every night it happens all over again. Every night I see those flames. See him looking out of that locked window in the cabin, hearing him screaming for me to help him. And then he laughs at me and he says he'll punish me for not helping him. You did all you could. No. I should have gone in and tried to save him. He'll return just as he says he will. He'll return and make me die in the flames like he did. Norma, stop it. I can't escape him. Stop I it. Can't. And listen to me. I'm a doctor. I know about these things. I killed him. I killed my husband. No. You're just torturing yourself with a guilt fantasy. You you probably couldn't have saved David even if you'd tried. But deep in your mind, you feel you could have. But David was sick. I should never have let him alone, George. I don't want to die. You mustn't let the fire kill me, George. You've got to calm yourself. Yes. I can't help you if you don't cooperate. Yes, yes, yes. Well, now, I sent Miss Freely for your coat. It's a nice, brisk day. You and I are going for a walk, all right? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. All right, George, all right. Feel like having a cigarette? <laughs> yes, yes, a cigarette would be fine. Here you are. Thank you. This is George! What is it? David, he's here. He's looking at me. Norma, don't. He's in that flame. Norma, this is just a lit match. Take him away from me. Don't bring him near me. Please, please, don't. All right, all right, there. <laughs> match is out. There's nothing to be afraid of now. Don't, don't ever let him in again. Promise me you won't, George. Promise me. Here's Mrs. Loring's coat, Doctor. Thank you, Miss Freeling. Oh, by the way, Mrs. Loring, this letter is for you. A letter for me? Well, go ahead, Norma. Open it. <laughs> then we can get started on our walk. All right. George. What's the matter? Look what was in the envelope. Why, right. it's part of a photograph of you. It was taken outside the cabin at Tallwood three years ago. Strange. 
Wonder what it's about. You said the dead don't return. Huh? Look in this envelope, the rest of my photograph. Charred paper and ashes. Miss Freely, where did you get this envelope? Why, it was in the mailbox, Doctor. Very peculiar, isn't it? There's something even more peculiar. What do you mean? The cabin in which Mr. Loring was burnt to death was located at Tallwood. This envelope is postmarked Tallwood. Norm, I wish you wouldn't come with me. I'll phone you after I get the information at the post office. No, George. You'll, you'll try to keep things from me, and I, I want to hear the truth. I've got... Oh, George, wait. What is it? Coming across the street. That, that's Ralph, my postman. Good. He should be able to help us. Good morning, Mrs. Lorry. Uh, Ralph, this is Dr. Haynes' uh, friend. We, we want to talk to you. Oh, sure. It's about this envelope. You delivered it to my house this morning. You'll notice that the address is typewritten and it's postmarked Tallwood. Oh, yeah, I see, Tallwood. How can we trace this envelope to the sender? You can't trace it, Doctor. You can't? Why not? It came by regular mail this morning. You yourself delivered it. Oh, not me. I'm making my first morning delivery now. Well, then... Then how did this envelope get in the mailbox? You got me, Doctor. Maybe somebody's playing tricks on Mrs. Loring. David, David, put it there. Come on, Norma. I'm taking you back to the house. <laughs> oh, uh, just a minute, Mrs. Loring. What? I got a letter for you. This one's through regular channels here. <laughs> it's a funny thing, though, uh... This one's got the same postmark, too. Tallwood. I'll take that letter. It's for Mrs. Loring. No, it's all right, Ralph. Okay, Mrs. Loring, as long as you say so. This envelope is from David, too. He's come back. I'm going to die. And there's nothing anyone can do to save me. No, Norma. Someone is playing rotten tricks to make you suffer. Somehow I'll prove it to you. <laughs> now, here. We'll open this envelope and see what it is this time. Hmm. The letter with burnt edges. Yes. Norma. The flames and I are at Tallwood. Waiting for you. David. It's from him. He's waiting for me. He's not there. <laughs> Can't you see how obvious it is now? No. Dead men don't write and mail letters. It's just as I told you, a trick. No, no, it isn't. David sent that letter. There's no mistake. That's his handwriting. Mrs. Loring, you should listen to Dr. Haynes. It isn't wise for you to make this trip. It's no use, Miss Freely. Her mind's made up. You don't understand, either one of you. I have to go to Tallwood. I I can't escape him. It's better this way. Up up here, maybe maybe he'll forgive me. But, Mrs. Loring, your husband died six months ago. You're just making things difficult for yourself. He's not dead. Not the way you think he is. Perhaps Norma. It is best you insisted on coming up here tonight. It'll give me a chance to prove something to you. Is it much farther, Doctor? No, we're almost there. The cabin in which Mr. Loring was burnt to death was located just around this bend in the road. In a few seconds, Norma, you'll see for yourself how things really are. And then... What's the matter, Doctor? Why did you stop so suddenly? Miss Freely, you stay here in the car with Mrs. Loring. George, George, look at it. Doctor, what is it? That cabin over there with the lights. Can't be. When I saw it last, it was just ashes. But now it's just the way it was before the fire. George, please. Please take me away from here before it's too late. Please. Oh, wait. Door's open. <laughs> Come on, Norma. George, do you smell it? Yes. Yeah. The odor of burning wood. Well, they probably forgot to put the fire out in the fireplace. But there's no wood in the fireplace. It's empty. David is here. He's here waiting for me. No, Norma, no. This cabin, it's just the way it was the night of the fire. The two chairs were just this way. His coat was on this bench right here where it is now. 
It's in this newspaper on the table. This paper. Look at it. Look at the date. September 16th, 1948. The 16th of September. That was the night this cabin burned out and the night he died in the flames. I'm taking you back to the car, Norma. And then... Jack! What is it? Look at the window. His face. There's nothing at the window. He disappeared. He didn't want you to see him. The dead can do that. He's out there waiting for me, waiting to... Probably Miss Free. Oh, no. It's David. Don't let him in, George. He's going to kill me, George. Please, if you love me, if you want to save me, George. Hello, Norma. It's been a long time, hasn't it? A very long time. been a long time, hasn't it, Norma? You. Nice of you to remember. Norma, who is this man? I'm Carl Loring. Loring? He's David's brother. I didn't know David had a brother. I guess I'm the kind of family talks about in hushed tones. You know, one in every family closet. What's this all about, Loring? I don't believe I caught your name. It's Dr. Haynes. Now tell me, what are you up to? I might ask you to the same thing. Carl, David is here. He said he would be. Then you know? Oh, cut it out, Norma. Why did you send me the letter? What letter? This one. With the burnt edges. In the handwriting of my dear departed brother. He wrote to you, too? Look, Loring, I don't know what your game is, but Norma has been made very sick by your rotten trickery. Mine? It's obvious that you're behind this. That cabin door was locked, but you had the key to open it. I don't have to make explanations to you, but just to set you straight, these keys were sent to me in the mail. Here, you can keep them. And you can keep this box they were mailed to me in. George, the address on this box, it's in David's handwriting. Come on, Norma. I'm taking you back to the car. Hmm? Car? What car are you talking about? Why, mine. It's parked down the road a few yards. Well, I just came up the road. I didn't see any car. Miss Freely. Who's Miss Freely? Norma's nurse. She was in the car waiting for us. George, you, you've got to find her. You David, help me look for her, all right. You stay here, Norma. Oh, no, George, wait. Yes, what is it? Don't, don't make me stay here alone. You'll be all right. No, You'll be back you... as soon as possible. Let's go, Laurie. George! Take the woods on the other side George. of the building. Mrs. Laurie. Oh. I'm sorry I frightened you that way. Oh, oh Miss Freely, we, we, we thought something had happened to you. They're out looking for you. I'll, I'll call them back. No, don't. But I we... want to talk to you alone. What? It's about your husband. There's something out back in the woodshed. I want to show it to you. I, I don't understand. Your husband's death in the fire. I don't think it was an accident. There's something in the woodshed that makes me think it was murder. <laughs> Just inside the door here, Mrs. Loring, I'll switch on the flashlight so you can see it. There. That can. What is it? Look at the label. Magnesium. An incendiary powder. That's why the cabin went up in flames so quickly, before you had a chance to get in and save your husband. David was murdered. That's why he's come back. He thinks I did it. No, Mrs. Loring. Your husband hasn't come back. I know what it is now. The real murderer is trying to drive you mad. But how did you find this powder? I saw a man come up the road when you and Dr. Haynes went into the cabin. Yes? I hid the car in the woods. Then I followed the man. He had a package under his arm. This can. He put it here in the woodshed. Then he went over to the cabin. He was the man who left with Dr. Haynes. Carl. Yes, yes, he hated David. I'll stay here, Mrs. Loring. You'll have to work fast before what, they return. What, what should I do? There's a phone in the cabin. Get back there as quickly as you can and call the police. Oh. Here, here. Take the flashlight. Yes. Now hurry. All right, Miss Freely. Dr. Haynes? Dr. Haynes, is that you? It's so dark, I can't see. Dr. Haynes, please answer me. Is it... Hello. 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 
Operator. Operator, help. Hello. What's the matter, Mama? Oh. oh, George. What are you doing at the phone? What? I, I was trying to get the police, but the operator doesn't answer. The police? Why? Well, it's something Miss Freely told me. Miss Freely? You've seen her? Yes, she's out in the back. She told me Wait about... a minute. What is it, George? Those keys Carl Loring put on the table here, they're gone. But they were here when you both left. Yes, I know. George, that's Miss Freely. Come on. Norma, look. Woodshed's on fire. Oh, hurry, George. Miss Freely, get that woodshed. Look at this, Norma. A burnt lock. I found it in the ashes. This lock is the reason Miss Freely didn't have a chance. The door to that shed was locked from the outside. She was trapped. The same way David was trapped. She was murdered the same way David was. She found out about David. That's why she was killed. What did she tell you about David? Yes, Norma. What about David? Carl. Loring, where did you come from? I was standing back there watching the fire. Quite a blaze, wasn't it? A woman died in that fire. Miss Freely. Oh? She was locked in there. Murdered. By David's ghost? I only know this, Loring. The keys you put on the table in the cabin are missing. A killer, ghost or otherwise, must have locked the door with one of those keys. Now, if we can find... You haven't far to look for them, Dr. Haynes. What do you mean? There, at your feet, in the dirt. There are the keys. George, why are you slowing down? That diner just ahead. Hmm? I'll call the police from there. I thought you were going to drive right into the village to give the sheriff the story. I've changed my mind. I decided this way would be better. Okay, you're the doctor. I'll be out in a minute. Oh, George, let me go with you. No, there's nothing to worry about. You're all right now. George! I won't be long. You're afraid of me. Aren't you, Norma? Afraid to be alone with me. I... Uh, how long have you known Haynes? A year? Well, I'm going to tell you things about Haynes you didn't know. And you're lucky I'm here to tell them to you. Haynes is a murderer. What? He killed your nurse. I don't know why. Probably because she was getting in his way. No! He told you he tried to call the police from the cabin. But the line was cut. He lied. I tried it. It was alive. No, no. You're, you're not telling the truth. George is in there now calling the police. Don't fool yourself. He's not calling the police. It's just a mm. stall. I've been following him. I saw everything he did up at the cabin. He's a crazy killer, Norma. What are you doing? He'll try to get you first and then me. I'm taking you to a place where he won't look for you. We're going back to the cabin. And in just in case he does come back, we'll have the police waiting there for him. Dr. George Haynes. May I speak to the sheriff, please? Sheriff ain't here. He's out. How soon will he be back? I can't say. This is very important. Please try to get a message to him as soon as possible. I'll try. What's the message? Tell him I'm bringing in a pyromaniac. Pyro what? A, a fire-mad killer. I'm calling from a diner on the Craig River Road. Tell the sheriff that in case something goes wrong, I may need his help to hold on to the murderer. <laughs> Carl. There's nothing to worry about now, Norma. You're here in the cabin and I'm with you. But he might come back here looking for me. You said we'd call the police as soon as we got here. Oh, the police. That's right. Go ahead, Norma. You call them. Yes. All right, Carl. Carl. Hmm? There's no buzz on the wire. That's right. There couldn't be a buzz if the line is dead. What's the matter, Norma? Why are you looking at me that way? The line. George said it was dead. Is that what George said? Oh, yes, so he did. Then 
Then what, Norma? Then it was you, not George, who... That's right, Norma, me. You're the murderer. Forgive me for lying to you, but I just had to get you alone this way so we could talk. <laughs> it's nice to talk, Norma, before you come to unpleasant things. No, no, please, please, please Carl, please let me go. After all my trouble, I wouldn't think of it. <laughs> That letter from David and the photograph. I sent them to you. You? And this cabin, I rebuilt it just for you. I thought you would appreciate reliving a few moments here. I wanted you to have some pleasant memories of the past. You murdered your own brother. Oh, did I? Now, let's see. How did David die? Oh, yes. Magnesium powder. The door was locked from the outside. It was very simple, wasn't it? When everything was arranged, all that had to be done was strike a match. I think... No, no! It's so easy to just... No! Strike a match. Still simple, isn't it, Norma? No! Just a little match. No, no, not again. Please, don't. Why are you afraid of fire, Norma? I don't know. I don't know. You hate it, don't you? You're afraid of fire like a frightened animal in the forest. Carl, don't look at me like that. David was afraid of fire, too. <laughs> Petrified of it, ever since he was a little boy. When he was six years old, he burned his hand. He was so frightened he couldn't move a muscle. He couldn't take his hand out of the fire. Carl, please. It was that way the night the cabin burned down. I can see him now. He was like a child again, terrified, lost at the first sight of fire. I can see him. You were here that night? I said I can see him, didn't I? It's simple enough to murder anybody who's that afraid of fire. Anybody like David? <laughs> or you? No, don't, don't come near me, don't. Don't be afraid, Norma. You'll make it much too easy for me. <laughs> You'll be petrified like David when I light this fire. No! Put that man down! Run away, Put it out! Go ahead, run before it's too late. No, Carl, please, please, put it out. Well, why don't you run? You can't, can you? You're paralyzed with fear just like David. Just like he was that no, night. No, no, he wasn't afraid. He wasn't. He didn't even know. Why did you kill him, Norma? No. I, I don't remember exactly. The thought came to me when I saw David light his pipe. It was the flame. I didn't want to kill him, but I couldn't stop myself. Hey, Miss Freely. Hmm? Do you remember about her? Miss Freely. Yes. Miss Freely would have told on me. She found out about the magnesium powder. I'd be punished. I brought that powder up here. Oh, no, I put that powder there. That was six months ago. Hmm? I found it in the woodshed after David's death. Hmm? I knew you killed him. I hmm? had to prove it. That's why Dr. Haynes let me bring you back here. You were right about her, Loring. George. You better put on your coat, Norma. George. I want you to come with me. Where, where, George? Where are we going? Well, we'll have to go to the police first and tell them. The police? Why, what's wrong? What you did, Norma. Oh, but that was a dream. It didn't really happen. Norma, please. David isn't really dead. I got those letters from him. The fire was just a dream. Come, Norma. Tell me. Why don't you tell me? It was just a dream, wasn't it? Yes, Norma. In a way, it... It was a dream. A nightmare. Well, that extinguishes tonight's fiery little fable. Now you can see how a ghost turns out to be just a... False alarm. You know, Norma Loring's flame-throwing act brings to mind a ringing verse by an engine-chasing potentate. Now, let's see, how's it go? Oh, yes. 
some flames burn red while Bunsen's burn blue. But light up your spouse for that multicolored hue. <laughs> was heard in the United States over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System, and has been rebroadcast for servicemen and women overseas through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. <laughs>